Hello and welcome back to the OGA North American Qualifiers. We're in our penultimate play day here. I'm set up and joined once again by the wonderful Captain Fluke. That's me and that's you. And this is a game that we got on our hands the second of the night. And this one's between Luminosity and Rise. Yeah. So obviously we've just seen a little bit of a, a sad post day for a Challenger League showdown. But these are two teams that I guess they've had a little bit more time to look towards this match because they've not really had... You know, they've had other stuff on, but this is not as immediate as the other teams tonight. Yeah, I mean, now everyone has everything to play for here. The Pro League play days are over. The Challenge League play days are over. Relegations is over. Rise, unfortunately, didn't manage to find their way into that. Luminosity did finish the season quite off well, and they've gone pretty confidently into this bracket so far. They had a decent matchup against Disrupt. They fell 4-0 at the start of that matchup, but... Then they managed to bring it completely back flawlessly, really, from their part. So I think everyone's money really is on Luminosity here. But let's head into the map ban and see exactly what maps we are going to be going to here between Luminosity Gaming and Rise Nation. Rise have had a bit of a weird time of it throughout Challenger League. They had a bit of a slow start. They managed to equal Two-Faced in points. But because that they lost their matchup against Two-Faced in the regular season... They didn't have the tiebreaker, and therefore Two-Face were the ones who entered it into that relegations. And now Two-Face are in Pro League. Yeah, they did well with it. I'm sure Ryzer kind of kind of want to take this opportunity to prove themselves, yeah. obviously, up against a team like Luminosity because their first round, well, it was it was kind of easy for them against Drac Esports, a team that hasn't really been the same level of competition that say Luminosity had in Disrupt. Bank is the first one that's taken off, and that was the same ban that they rolled with in the previous game. So, yeah, they're sticking to their kind of laurels and they're happy with what they want to take out. In the meantime, obviously, Rise Nation, they have a couple of possibilities, but they usually, well, they previously banned Club and Coast. So I guess we'll see if one of those two is back on the docket. Luminosity have had a bit of an up and a down spree throughout Pro League so far. They had a really, really strong start to Pro League to their first season. But then they fell off for quite a while, but you know, since DreamHack, since they dropped Pixel, they picked up Factor. Looks like they've been looking a little bit better and uh, definitely looking good going into this bracket. Definitely one of the favorites good to make it all the way to the event in Croatia. Of course, the winner of this will go against EG, the winner of EG versus Obey. And that should definitely be a good match, which will be coming up after this one. Rise, I'm going to ban out Clubhouse, and that's going to leave Luminosity with the first map pick here. I'm going to guess it's going to be Border pick. Yeah, Border's one that can play to them. Obviously console was their previous one and they took it 7-5 but then they 7 owed Villa so that was a very convincing kind of play for them there and I'm sure you know it's always something that they can potentially look to but you know there's there's a lot of option here for them to decide well where do they want to take Rise to as we said hmm. yeah Consulate is the one that we are going to opt to and you know that was their previous pick Rise went 7-0 when they played Drac Esports on Consulate but again there's a difference between taking Drac and uh, taking Luminosity to a map yeah, that is very true. That's going to leave our map pool with Border, Coastline, Cafe, and Villa. If I'm Rise Nation, I do not want to take LG to Villa at all. What are we thinking here for Rise? Because I don't see them taking the Border either. It's potentially a Coastline or a Cafe from them. Um, yeah, I mean, well, Cafe was a 7-4 versus Drac, so obviously, you know, they'd lost a couple of rounds. Villa, oh. this is a bold move, Rise. You've got a. You've got to trust yourself because now Luminosity, they're going to go defense first on that. And yeah, they're going to do well with that. And you've got to really trust your counter striking <laughs> against them to take them there because, hey, I guess maybe they're saying, well, where Disrupt failed, we can step in and make them bleed. Well, that's going to leave us with Border, Cosine, and Cafe as potentially one of our deciders. I'm, I'm kind of hoping that Ryze ban out the Border here because... I just really wouldn't be confident taking Luminosity to Border, given the fact that I feel like, no, it's not. It's going to be a Cafe ban coming out from Rise. So, they, I mean, th these are both decent maps for Luminosity. I feel like Border's a little bit better than Cosine is for them. I know it's said Border about five times so far in this map <laughs> ban, but it is kind of one of the classic maps for Luminosity here. Yeah, well, they have their option of Coastline or Border. Obviously, you know, they usually Rise do ban out Coastline, so... It's an option where if they might want to kind of put a bit of pressure onto Ryzen, they're yeah, going to opt for okay. there. So they're going to try and take them to an uncomfortable potential map. And I think f for me, this has kind of gone the favor of Luminosity. I think with Villa as the middle pick, yeah, that's a curious, well, it's that's like, a curious decision. 
So if Ryze are willing to take them to Villa there, clearly they have something in mind about what they want to do and some counter striking against Luminosity. There's yeah. also an element of Luminosity might not want to show everything here that they've got because they will expect to go against either EG or Obey. Definitely going to be a tough matchup for them to make the LAN event for in sure. the semifinals. So potentially there's, there's an element of that as well for LG here that they might play Villa the same way that they played it. But let's have a look as we go into the series. It is going to be consulate to start with here between LG and Ryze. This is LG's map pick, so Ryze are going to be able to pick what side they start. It's going to be defense. We just saw a consulate. We're going to go see it again. I'm going to know another capital band as well. Yeah, that kind of par for the course, really, for this kind of map. I'm curious how they double down. And obviously, yeah, you know, it, it was a back and forth game. I think it's fair to say, as we just saw, obviously, Rogue and Sonics pull out the 7-5. And everyone's kind of got expectations here for Luminosity to do pretty well against Rise, But again, you know, Rise was so bitterly close to making their position in playoffs. They're in a position as well where we've just seen two CL teams take yep. the PL positions. So maybe this could be over the period of two days, the third CL team to make a PL team bleed. I guess if we, it depends how we count the previous match. If that was two CL teams going up against each other, but Jackal is going to be the one, and that really frees up a lot of potential roam here. Mm, the Maestro band's quite interesting coming out here from Luminosity. It's going to be Rise Nation. Who are left with the final ban here? I would probably guess an Echo, just because Mira isn't that useful here on Consulate, but Ryze seem to be thinking about this one for a bit. There's a lot of options here, like a Pulse would be a good ban as well here for Ryze. Maybe like a Valkyrie as well would be a good ban as well. But no, here's going to be an Echo. So there goes all that theorizing out the window. <laughs> so Maestro and Echo both off the board. It's kind of rare to see. Maybe we'll see some extended mirror usage coming out from Ryze here. As we'll see, Renable 1 getting underway. It's going to be Ryze Nation who start out on the defense, of course, because this is Luminosity's map pick. Yeah, and obviously we'll see them head upstairs for the first time actually to console. They're going to try and lock it down. With both hard destruction on the board, it does mean that you have the ability to bring the Habana here. And I think they're going to potentially bait that because usually if you're attacking this and you have either on, you'll take your Habana upstairs to crack open the kind of, uh, you know, projector side and projector corner wall and the Thermite, you'll run downstairs to open the big spaces against the garage side. It's often a one or the other. You're never really in a situation where you need both. Sometimes you're in a situation where you don't even really need either. Um, so it potentially they're trying to bait down to that ground floor as the first pick. That might not the worst pick in the world, don't get me wrong, but usually Habana's more commonly seen. I know that this is kind of an obvious thing to say for everyone who's ever watched the Midosity, but Rexen is our big man to look out for here. We just saw Neptunes go huge on Sonics. I'm expecting Rexton to do very much the same here. It, after the first half, I think he was one of the highest fraggers in NA. I think he had some of the best KDs after the first half of Pro League this season. So we're definitely all eyes on Rexton right now as we'll move into Ryze's first defense. Also, maybe if someone, you know, you guys haven't been following Challenge League that much, Adam has found his way into this lineup for Ryze very recently. So kind of like making a bit of a return for himself. And we'll see Luminosity on what they're going to be doing on this as, as well. If you haven't been paying attention to Luminosity's recent roster change, they dropped Pixel and they picked up Factor. Well, let's see how that comes together. Setting themselves up with the... Uh, I was just going to quickly mention that there's also a bit of a storyline here because Factor okay. used to play for Ryze during the Allied Miner. Oh, okay. Which he went plus 26, I think, during the Allied Miner for Ryze. Wow. So, well, yeah. Let's see if he can do the same against them. Uh, yeah, setting themselves up for the long angle holds there with the short wall and being able to keep themselves aggressive, I think, is what we've generally seen NA utilize those four really sharp movements to kind of keep a lot of the map hot. IQ instantly finding their way forward to, well, some information with the Nomad charge halfway up the wall to try and catch someone that might potentially drop down. Well, now in this moment in time, they're just pinging all the information and putting immediate pressure on the windows with the cover from the side. But with the movement coming out here from the combination of the Valkyrie and the Mozzie and all the portable information they have, a oh. very easy and quick pick up there as Thomas gets caught completely unaware by Adam. Absolutely beautiful wall bang coming out from Adam there as he will be able to secure the first kill of the round and the first kill of the series as well, but quickly we'll trade it out, of course, by Hyena up onto that console repel. Acid will go down, and now we turn it into a 4 4 situation, but there goes the Valkyrie downstairs. That's the Nitro off the board. Great kill from Doodle up onto benches, 
and this is looking like all for Luminosity right now to do. We still have Adam below. He doesn't have an Nitro remaining anymore, but he will pick up another kill. That's Rexon off the board. Hopefully this will be trade for Luminosity sooner rather than later, but Adam still in commanding position. As I said, doesn't have that Nitro, but does have that super shorty to threaten the plant. Well, there's one trade to back the other way as Doodle suffers, and now it's going for a bit of a swing round, but with very little health on the side of Factor and the Diffuser Cold inside. They've got a lot of work left to do as a pairing. In the meantime, well, with Adam being as movable as he so seems to be, there's still so much damage he can do, and he's just going to try and hold the Diffuser close. The smoke is going to be the big, big cause of problems here for Factor, who will almost instantly go down in and amongst just one of those canisters, and with two left in the pocket of Vandal, well, he's just able to hold out and bait for time. In the meantime, they've doubled up and tried to take control of the admin and lobby stairs side, but they've got to do something fast, because that diffuser is still hot oh. property, and they at least find Adam and get themselves back in a 2-2, but with Hyena now suffering from a little bit of damage as well, they're going to have to double up, and they're going to have to do it fast. Hyena could be slowly crawling his way through onto Long Death. He's going to get pinged out by the default cam, however, and Beaser is going to take him off the ball with his second kill of the round. So on to Factor to try and make it happen. The default cam still up, however, and Beastly finds the 3k as Rise Nation will take their first round pretty convincingly. Yeah, that was very, very well put together for them. They're able to kind of, obviously, the amount of damage and carnage that was caused downstairs just really slowed what could be done by Luminosity because not only did they obviously lose the bodies, but the diffuser was in the middle of no man's land. And they knew they still had to do work upstairs. And with only 40 seconds left, you know, it's a bit of a tough situation to be in. Very tough situation to be in indeed. As we push through into round number two, it's going to be a lobby and press room defense coming out from Rise. And we'll see the double French move up from here, as well as a mirror pick, but potentially six bit coming through here as well from Beastly onto the pulse. I definitely agree with that. Picking the mirror here kind of like says to me, okay, it's going to be a downstairs. Yeah, and the thing about Pulse is he's such a good operator on this map. As we've commented before many, many times, is he has the ability to sit underneath one of those walls and get the entire tire push from an entire side. It's Defenders big, big bomb. flat surfaces on the dead east and dead west, and with all the information from repels and all the information possibility of just being able to run out and cause carnage, especially as we've already kind of seen Adam wanting to veer into that a little bit, you know, you put him on the bottom floor and let Beastly just feed that information to the people who can maneuver around it, it could be absolutely monumental. Absolutely monumental indeed. We'll have a look how things continue to go down. As we'll move into round number two, have a look what Ryze want to do here, but the strategy should be somewhat obvious, especially with the pulse in the lineup here. And again, like we just saw Consular, we should be very familiar with how this kind of thing does go down, we, you hold on quite heavily to the upstairs, quite heavily into that vertical play coming through, and that's why we do see the soft attrition as well coming up from the smoke shotgun of England. Well, looking for anything that might pop around, but no luck so far, and in the meantime, Beastly is free to keep maneuvering and try and find where the initial push is coming from. In the meantime, there's always the worry about those doors inside, and you can see that Rexon and Thomas have doubled down on the little bit of a semblance of control. Now, previously, we've seen a Nomad on this map, and previously, we've not seen it have too much luck. So, I guess let's hope that the wind swings in Thomas's favor, and they're able to at least catch a couple of the aggressive moments of Rise as they set themselves up for primarily an eastern side push with Hyena doubling down some cover on the lobby windows. We'll definitely have a look at how that push is going to continue to go down. The admin side take is coming through. It's going to be Rexon leading the charge here on the gridlock to see what he can do. But they've already got control of admin. This is pretty quick movement coming out from Luminosity, but they're going to have to start to affect this upstairs hold coming out from Rise. Oh, there's the pulse deep, oh. and he suffers some damage. Well, no, he doesn't suffer any damage. None of it really goes through, but they'll know he's down there. They'll know he's causing some information. There's the ping from Factor saying, well, there's a body, so be aware. And now it's a matter of seeing if they can still somehow make something work, because with a minute 30 on and some of this top floor control under theirs, they've still got a lot more left to take over. And the potential for people to rotate round and run against them is always a big threat. England! 
Lucky to rotate a little bit on the timing there and doesn't get caught out by the man that was just swinging his way in. But at the same time, if he was paying attention to the swing, might have been able to find a body. In the meantime, they're going to see if they can catch anybody who goes a little bit loose and a little bit wide on this front door. But Thermite so far hasn't taken the bait, is waiting for the rest of the team to make their move. Yeah, a lot of work being done by Luminosity so far, but they haven't managed to find any picks up on the board, but neither has Rise either. This utility is going to start to bear down on them if they're not too careful about it. Luminosity is starting to make the work happen as they start to push into projectors as well. So we've got Beasley down below. He's taking a little bit of damage as well from a factor. And he's still be pulsing it out. He's going to be giving off that info. Dude, he's actually going to go for a plant right now. That he's actually in the site. Now, I chose is going to go out from BC. He's not going to hit the mark, however, as Doodle successfully going to plant. And it's all to do for Ryze right now as they turn into the attack. As they go for this retake, it's going to be very, very difficult as Thomas takes down Adam. And the gridlocks are down into the hallway. Factor takes down one as of his own, but England does manage to frag back. But this is looking horrible for Ryze to try and make something happen right now. As Rexon pulled down to the upside down repel. Doodles waiting for any kind of jump out, but Rexon takes final off the board on Anti Jaber. Acid is gonna go for the run out here. It looks like he does find one, but instantly gets traded out. And it's all to do. But no, it was England with a TK. He finds one, but no. Luminosity will find the round. In fact, the uh, tanks down England. And that's a uh, that's a really good clip from Luminosity, honestly, and a really good uh, execute from them. But it kind of felt like Ryze were expecting this admin side push, and they had no eyes on sight. Yeah, I think one of the good things that we saw there from uh, Luminosity was just the shepherding of players away from the point, away from the lobby, and being able to take just that little bubble of control and to throw down a plant with 10 people still up on the board. You know, it, it's one of those kind of gambles where we've got to hope that they are where we think they are and they can see what we think they can see and that we can see them in case things start to happen because nobody was dropped until the plant was down. You know, and it, it's very, very well played and well trusted to get that kind of bubble in. But it's also one of those moments where, again, you've got to have a lot of kind of faith that what we know is the right information at this point. I mean, all the faith is on Doodle there, right? Because you're staring at the floor for seven seconds, praying oh, yeah. that you don't get nitroed, you don't get pushed, you don't get shut down. And you have a lot of confidence in your teamates to be able to protect you doing that. It takes a lot of trust and teamwork to be able to do a plant like that. So well done to Luminosity for taking their first round on the board. But one round does not make the map, does not make the series. Let's see how things continue to go down. As Rise are going to go down sets. I also just want to quickly mention, because we don't go over rosters in OGA right now, during like graphics, the coaches as well from each team, Virus from Luminosity and Remorse from Rise, who definitely do a lot of respective works for their teams. And if you can see any counter strike coming up from either team, you can be sure that the coaches are responsible for a lot of that work. Shout out to coaches. All you coaches out there, Stern Ab loves you. I love you. A lot of people love you. But you might get sassed a lot on Twitter. Yep. Setting themselves up for a cafe hold now, taking down all the way to the basement. They've obviously got the bandit in an attempt to try and hold on and stop anything that the Thermite does aggressively against this. But, you know, what we've seen and what is most commonly known is you've got to keep piano. You've got to keep that vertical control. You've got to keep, well, your bandit safe. And we've seen them just batched in a couple of different ways. One of them being just swing around yellow with a quick push and drop the body. And the other being, well, let's take it slow and steady and get control from the top. There is the quick and aggressive approach as they've already got the wall open, the Nomads and the Gridlocks are going over the top, but Noodle finds Adam in the meantime. However, they have found their way oh. in through yellow. There is a C4 that finds two bodies and Doodle at least finds the trade and there's another one Thermite suffers in the meantime. Suddenly a one versus three as Acid picks up another body and Sledge comes in around the back stairs and finds one but only downs him with the other body still above and well, it's a one versus two and two minutes on the board. Factor does dispatch a Vandal but Acid and England have both suffered health. They will be well aware of where this body is in this meantime and they're going to try and hold on from the reverse side. The frag grenade cooked over the top but whether the ADS is a dispatched or not, I guess we'll not find out. He does manage to put a little bit of damage but not enough and in the meantime they've crept around the other side and oh. there it is, Rise Nation pull themselves back round against a very swift push. A devastating nitro cell coming out there from Rise to be able to shut down the whole push coming out from Luminosity and a great, great kind of early rush strategy to come out from them but they just couldn't move fast enough to shut down that Nitro play. And I think like, if that Nitro hadn't happened, they probably would have taken the round because that was actually pretty well executed by Luminosity. They had no my charges going very, very deep as everyone else was pushing up. Gridlocks are going down to the back of white, making sure they can't play there. And it was very, very fast from Luminosity, but that Nitro completely shuts it down. That is the very issue of doing a very spaced up rush like that. You've got to be aware of your spacing. So we're going to get to round number four. Things looking pretty good for Rise Nation here. 
luminosity, tried something, it didn't work. We're going to see how it goes down as we move to a console office and meeting room defense coming out from Rise yet again. Last time, this was pretty bad from luminosity. Yeah, I, I mean, the kind of way that things started to fall apart was very quick and aggressive. And obviously, we were, you know, in this kind of only two standing situation with at least a minute 30 on the board. And when you're in that moment and you don't have the diffuser, you've got to kind of look at it and go, well, what went wrong and how can we change that for the second time round? In the meantime, Rise have opted for a slightly different strategy. They've taken off the mozzie and Adam's potentially going to play in the basement now and feed and filter the information up to the top because, as I said, Luminosity are probably expecting a bit more of an aggressive hold in that mid floor. And it's going to allow, I guess, uh, Adam, if he needs to, to drop down and still be as potentially useful as a mozzie can be in holding that central floor. At the same time, I guess it's down to, as I said, luminosity. They've got to find the response here. They still have the double flank and roam control on the sides of Nomad and Gridlock, but it's utilizing them that becomes the tough bit. Yeah, Adam going to go for his prone spawn peak here, but... Yep, he's not going to get found out there. Factor shuts him down instantly, and that's already the Nitro off the board. That was a very brave spawn peak coming out from Adam, and it will be dealt with very, very swiftly. Interesting to see Factor on the gridlock now, rather than Rexon, and Rexon back on his roll as the book. So we'll have a look how that's going to be going down as well, as Rexon going to be moving all the way through and just doing all of his stuff here as well, just to open up all of the books. Luminosity begin their normal attack. And I think, honestly, with Adam off the board, this is looking way better for Luminosity. Not because that Ryze don't have that info on the board anymore, they don't have the threat of that Nitro, but also Adam is a big key player last time that Luminosity went through attack it. Yeah, it's always the big thing there. Was he, he kind of... He was integral in the aggression that he was bringing in that central floor, and the bodies that he could take out without really being challenged would... Well, impressive is just a light word for how it came together. They're getting aggressive on these doors, though, as England starts to try and dig his way towards Hyena, who will be, well, I guess aware that he's being watched, and it's almost like a come fight me moment as he gestures with bullets towards the body himself. Rexon, in the meantime, is steadily clearing across the top floor, and he's getting some he's getting some open uh, against the admin side, and they're making sure that, well, they can see something. In the meantime, Nomads are going long distance, and it looks like they're going to try and sneak a plant. It does look like that right now. They do have smokes up on the board, of course, and they have the Nomads that should be able to shut down many kind of responses coming out. England, of course, is still threatening with the Nitro from below, however. We still have smokes up on the board from Ing uh, from Vandal, sorry. As England looks for kind of some kind of run out here, goes for the spawn peaks, goes to the peak, sorry. As Rexon goes for the deep nade, Vandal does go down, however, that is smokes off the board. It's all down to England in terms of plant denial. But Ryan's gonna have to get aggressive with this if they want to keep control of their site. England still threatening with the C4 from below. He's gonna throw it out, but goes down before he can detonate the hyena. Finding that kill for free is all down to Beastly in a 1v5 to try and bring this in. It's a post-plant situation right now. This is not looking good for Beastly to try and bring it in. Just open up a little bit. Does get that great kill into Hyena, but instantly gets traded out by Doodle. I mean, it was well kind of put together, their luminosity. And I think that's the good thing that we're seeing from them, is they're responding, they're bringing themselves back better into the fight. And, you know, for when things go wrong, they can at least respond and try and get the diffuser down, which we've seen been the victim of a lot of other teams, is the ability to actually execute when push comes to shove. In the meantime, we're seeing some clever stuff from Ryzen that they're... Well, they're trying new stuff as well on the defense. Obviously, Adam's lying down spawn peak didn't quite work as we've seen his play previously. But, you know, those are the kind of things where you can try and you can pull it off and then you can try again. And in that situation, sometimes it's better to attempt a new strategy than rest on your laurels because it's one of those tricks where if you know you're against a team that can do good responses, try and think of a new question. Yeah, I'd agree with that. I'd think about that for a few seconds, but... <laughs> Uh, yeah, well, things are looking really good for Luminosity here. I mean, they've already found their two attacks that we kind of do talk about that. You do need to find those. And I think there was good adaptation. Like, the, the admin take with an instant opening pick onto the pulse, I think, completely won that. I think Adam went for a very high risk, high reward kind of thing, and it just did not pay off for him whatsoever. Ryan's going to recognize that console take clearly. They're going to have to rework that a little bit before they go back there. But meanwhile, while they think about that one, they're going to go down to a lobby and press room defense instead this um this last time was such a weird attack because luminosity just walked into sight and just planted straight away 
Yeah, and you know, as you said, when you see a plant go down go. with every single player still on the board, it raises attackers. some serious questions five of the defense. Because in that point, the attack's been brilliant. You can always assume they've been brilliant. Yes, there's surely the 1% that's been just outrageously lucky, but you would normally assume that they've done their droning, they've done their shepherding, they've done their pushing, they've cleared themselves of position and points to get the plant down. And they've done it in the way where the defenders are either A, unsure, or B, unable to safely get the response. So I guess we'll see if, obviously, Rise can think of a better strategy for their second swing round at this point. In the meantime, a quick clear is coming from underneath as Rexon gets droned ahead aggressively, but doesn't go all the way. So can't quite find the man that's currently lying in the back of archives. Yeah, drone's going very, very deep indeed, it would seem, as Beastly... Still playing around in the servers and see what he can do here. This is a perfect place for a cardiac sensor. And it's a perfect place to get kills like that. Does get traded out instantly. However, that is a beautiful pick coming out early on from Beastly. That's the Thatcher down, but also one coming out here as well onto Rexon. Yeah, and then they were able to pick up the trade there as well. Adam was not too far away and able to find from behind. And Thomas gets Vandal, brings it back to a 3-3 situation. Adam, in the meantime, has found his way back to the top floor and is, well, potentially looking for a run out in this moment in time as Factor actually creeps up and is potentially going to try and take advantage of this. Maybe he doesn't know he's there, but he does. Both are aware and both are aggressive. And Adam comes out a little bit more shaken as Factor is able to rotate around the back. Is curious where the next movement's going to come, but is going to be some doubling down from Thomas on this upside down repel to allow themselves to pincer out the rook. Jones looking to come out from the other side, but it's going to be Acid who scores that kill onto Thomas as well with a nice run out. And there we go. There he goes. Oh, Adam goes down as Factor picks him up as well. He does have that top floor control, but no, with the prone peak, he's going to expose his feetsies and gets taken down. It's all down to Doodle in a 1v2 to try and bring this in. Acid is injured. Technical 1v1 right now for Doodle, but will he know this? No, Acid will get picked up. So now a 1v2 right now. He does have this upstairs control. However, as Smokes are going to go out, I wonder if they do know where he's at. The smoke has gone out onto that doorway as well, onto the hatch, sorry. As drones are going out, but the default cam saw the drone go down yellow, so this should be an easy cleanup from Rise. It's all down to do. With 40 seconds on the board, he's got time. He's got the diffuser, and he's still got three stun grenades and two exothermic charges. The, the ladder has very particular uses on this point, especially when you're in a two versus one situation where they can kind of double up and apply some immediate pressure against you. It's going to open up a bit of a distraction here and potentially blow it as he pushes from inside the point and try and do a bait and switch, but it depends how many smoke canisters are still in the pocket of England and what he can actually make do with them. Tries to bait a push and a collapse from the opposite side as he finds his way into Piano. Remaining. With 15 seconds, though, he's got to either put a body in the ground or try and stick a plant. And, the, well, yet again, the ladder is often the braver. The two Rise players collapse either side, but it only takes one to be able to bring themselves back into the lead. This is looking a bit iffy now for Luminosity, having lost that opening engagement. This is uh, this is kind of weird. I think also with the thermite charge there, like you are right, like he was trying to do that kind of distraction. But I think also the other element of that is that it's very easy to shoot those thermite charges. And I guess that he was kind of wondering if there was anyone in piano. Maybe didn't have any intel. But you know, normally a player, if that thermite charge is getting opened up like that, they'll just shoot at it, and then he can peek and get them off the board. But Unfortunately, it didn't work out too well for him, and we'll see how things are going to be going down as we move into Luminosity's final attack here. We'll see Factor going to be bringing the sledge along, so we've got two sets of nades up on the board for Luminosity. Well, let's see if they can make use of them, or if the Jaeger can eat them all up. Sledge is going to add a little bit more pace, and they're going to try and double down on the soft destruction. I think they've realized so far that the gridlock hasn't really been giving them the control that they've wanted, so potentially going to get... Well, I was about to say a little more aggressive. Let me asterisk that. A little Defending more aggressive than their standard pushes, but not as aggressive as their previous push on this point, which you can't really get more aggressive than well, that, I think. One of the um, interesting points now about how this map might play out is that this was Luminosity's map pick, so Ryze gets to pick sides at the start, but Luminosity gets to pick OT sides. And honestly, I'm starting to think now that with the way that series decides to play out, that the OT starting side is way more important than the normal starting side. Luminosity no, are actually in, in the clear here to actually take the series because they are 
all they need to do is just play keep up with Ryze, right? Like, and they can bring this into OT if they can win their four defenses, which seems pretty doable for the Luminosity here. They're definitely not in a bad place, but if they can win this round, they put themselves in a really good position. Ryze are the ones who, moving onto that attack, really need to put themselves on the board. Yeah, it's a fair point. I guess it's always, you know, it's where do you kind of gamble? Where do you set your chips and how do you try to make use of them? We've obviously seen um, more best of threes go the full distance in NA than any other yeah. region. It's been consistent back and forth in this region. And, and, you know, it's how they've kind of been approaching the tournament, how they've been approaching each other, the knowledge that they have on each other's teams, with a lot of them having history playing together or against each other or whatever. But the consistency of us hitting the third map and hitting OTs in NA is crazy. So, lots of drones are going to be going across the board here from Luminosity as they begin their take. Thomas is going to make his way up into the piano as well. We'll see exactly how this is going to be going down. Default cams are still up, of course. As Rise are very, very aware of what the situation is. This is their final defense. They need to put this round on the board if they want to have any kind of chance at bringing this series in. Drone still up on yellow for Luminosity here to see what they can do as they slowly begin their clear as they've got piano control. And this is really all they need right now. Yeah, I when people miss sledges, but... <laughs> it was just a bait and switch, you know? Yeah, yeah, it's just baying out the sledge movements. Well, they're getting aggressive control of this wall and with piano, they're able to get in. And obviously... You know, at this point, we got to realize that the round was over previously, and Rexon ends Adams around, just as I say that. They know someone is lurking around the back stairs as well, and Rexon finds a second. That is Jaeger and Castle off the board, and it's going to make the control here a little bit touchier. Them through the wall! Acid gets dropped, and the screaming is what gives him away for Rexon to find a third, and suddenly we are in a 5-1, with Beastly having to come from the top floor, but it doesn't matter as Luminosity put themselves level pegging before the turn of the half. Absolutely beautiful take coming out from Luminosity there as well. Especially seeing the kind of setup that was coming out from Rise. So they castled out Yellow Door and they castled out Bench's door, which means they're playing that really heavy roam game up on the top floor. So they can remain in the control of that and they can stop LG from cutting off any of their rotates down Spiral. So LG just see that and they go, okay, we'll just take Piano then. We'll just yeah, have this. You. And yeah, we'll have it and we'll just shut down the rotates as you come. Rise had no way of regaining control of a piano at all. They ha they tried to do that like double rotate, like someone would go benches and impact it open, which is why they sent the Rook there. And then they have the other guy come through into lobby. It was a little bit mistimed and I'm not 100% if the Rook did actually have impact still up. We're going to assume that he did. You going to say something? Oh no, I, I like the gesture when I'm thinking of what to say. Right. What I'm going to say yes. is... This is a bait and switch. They're playing them. They're playing them for fools, Stern up. Because they've obviously taken the bandit and they've said, well, they've kind of given the impression, well, we're going to go down to the basement. You're going to expect a basement here. Swapped the bandit over. Originally to the Valkyrie, which I agreed with, because I think that gives you more the, uh, the aggressive versatility you could bring as a surprise attack on this. But instead to the Jaeger, which again can kind of double down on that. With the mirror on the board as well, they're kind of doubling down on the bait and switch, and they're trying to hope that Ryze's loadout isn't one that can really work on this lobby push. Well, while we're talking about the lobby push as well, I know Capitao is banned, and I know Remorse isn't playing, but he is coaching. When Remorse played on Disrupt in CL Season 8, there was a great thing that Remorse did here, um, where he Capitaled into Antichamber, and like, you know, from the front door, but he was going to do it, but then his teammate went for the plant and it hit his teammate instead as he went for the crouch. So he killed his teammate and then he went to recover the diffuser and then he killed himself with the same Capital Ball. So, <laughs> what a disaster. I've I killed teammates with Capital Balls on this map. Rim also probably hate me for bringing that up, but I thought it's always a nice little tidbit of information. It's, it's nicer to have it on tape as well, so it's immortalized yeah, forever. Definitely, yeah. Yeah. Shout out. Uh, still on my YouTube, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> oh, there you go. Shout out. <laughs> <laughs> well, they're setting themselves up with this vertical control, and let's see how well Rise can respond to the change of pace. Obviously, they, you know, the lineup is still something that can cause some issues, as England's going to start smashing open the kind of connector and piano windows and see exactly. if they can find an angle inside. But with the mirror window, obviously, they have a little bit of width to the information and can double themselves down inside the bathroom, as well as the top floor control that they're opting to double rotate down onto. But with both mirror windows, it's generally a full sturdy hold, and they're trying to turn this into one big point where they can keep this center lockdown. 
Thomas so far not pressured too much and he's going to open up above the window to allow himself the ability to put some destruction there as the flashes start to roll in against the piano but it would be a bit of a mistake to swing in just yet they do find some bu bullets into the legs of doc but you know he just stims himself back up uses one of the pistols and with a minute 40 we've got to start seeing them find their way a little bit more inside Kind of looks like mostly a piano side take coming out from Rise here, but the big issue we're trying to do this is, of course, this heavy mirror setup coming out from Factor up into the bathroom. This is going to shut down this whole play entirely if Rise do intend to go for it. So far, they haven't been able to do too much work on it, but they're going to take one mirror window off the board. But no, there's an ADS there, and it is going to take it down. Grenades are going to go out, and it's going to basically make that mirror window useless. Yeah, taking the top and the bottom is just as bad, but taking Thomas through the floor is worse. Adam, with some great shooting there and great information, drops the man in the spy hole, and that allows a freedom a little bit more. Well, a little bit more freedom, in fact, if I don't go to that sentence, and their ability to find their way inside point. In the meantime, Doodle is able to rotate back round with the shotgun, can open some very big aggressive sight lines and allow themselves the ability to just smoke down as Adam finds a second, however. With 45 seconds, they've got to find more than bodies, though. They've got to start finding their way inside. Finally start to put some pressure on Yellow Stairs as the Doc looks for the long fight against the lobby door. In the meantime, Rexon is playing hot potato with the floor, and, well, it's just a matter of seeing if they can do something to stop it. The fast and aggressive oh. push gets stopped by Hyena, and he goes with the oh. double, and he finds it. Adam and England are taking out the equation, but Beastly finds Rexon on the back stairs. Now it's falling against this mirror window with Doodle still above in 22 seconds. He's so much in his smoke canisters, can't quite find the back of the Nomad, however, and it is just down to him. All three smoke canisters and everything left to do. Smoking at the mirror window so he can drop down, but it's going to be an obvious play as Acid is going to pick up that kill for free, and Ryans will put themselves on the board with their very first attack. This is not looking good for Luminosity all of a sudden, with a bit of a weird play coming out there, a bit of a throw-off play, but Ryze able to quickly adapt to it, and Adam with a beautiful couple of opening kills there as well. Yeah, it really came down to those kills, because if they hadn't have got those when they had, and they had less time on that push, that would have been uh, Luminosity's round, for sure, because they still had the bodies upstairs, and they had all of those smoke canisters too, like there was so much possibility for them. Yeah, Until they yeah. got killed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. We're moving into round number eight, however, this could be the second defense from Luminosity, and they've opted to go to console office and meeting, six picking the castle onto the vigil instead. Okay, not sure how I feel about like I said I said earlier, I actually quite like a vigil play here. I just not sure if roaming is that great on this particular site, I suppose. Um if you're going for like aggressive runouts, we saw a little bit of that from the previous series from Nep. Of course he was having kind of like limited success with that. You can you, you can like impact your garage, you can do the run out there, you yep. can impact the front door, you can run out there, you can impact visa door or visa window and you can run out there, Benchy's window as well. There's like there's like six run out opportunities here for you. If you're expecting a very heavy like repel side take. Of course that's kinda have to be it from Rise. It's to be up to them if they want to do a console side take or if they want to do an advent side take. With the fact that they brought smokes in the lineup, I would guess a console side take, but really could be anything from them. Well, there is Doodle finally able to get through, and Rexon's prepping himself for some aggression immediately against the window. In the meantime, Valkyrie's going to feed this back, and without an IQ, well, you're going to have to use your peepers to try and stop her peeping. And let's see if they can find that ability to shut it down. They're aware that there's going to be some window aggression, but there usually is on this map, so it's the ability to pick the right windows. Factor in the meantime is hanging not too far away and as you said is in a position and an operator that can get aggressive, can do these runouts and can do these impacts and if you can find impact with it, I guess that's the balance of how much attention Rise are paying to those. Has the Nomad, has the ability to at least stop some and with the gridlock can, usually that's more for control of the point and control of the internal stairs rather than anything close to external. You've got to more trust the Nomad but it's very hard to lock down all of the space. It is very, very hard indeed, and Nomads have gone down, of course. Adam, with that critical repel as well, he's trying to shut down that connector, rotate. So far, Ryze have managed to gain quite a decent amount of control, and they've set up quite well for what they actually want to do here, but no frags on the board for either side just yet. Thomas taking a little bit of damage, but he's still got that kind of vertical control as well downstairs to be able to do what he can. Doodle getting a little bit little by Adam on the rappel. <laughs> Ash Chaz going down as well. Almost taking him off the board, but no. Smokes will go down, and Doodle will... No, not, not go down. It's going to be Rexon is the first one off the board. 
Yet again, Adam on these windows is causing very big issues for the defenders that are trying to find some freedom. In the meantime, with that, Ash is able to just keep fighting body after body. Is putting more pressure on the consulate window and gets the man as he goes for a little bit of a quick swing there on Doodle. And Well, Doodle's lucky to escape with his life and is able to keep his smokes for another day. In the meantime, with a minute on, yet again, Ryzer in a position where they've got to start trying to make some movements with this. Because, as he said, time has been a killer, as we've seen in the previous game in the hands of Rogue. Yeah, Smoke should start to go pretty deep here. It looks like Factor is getting ready for any kind of run out, but also to deny that yellow in Repel. Thomas is below as well, but it's going to be Factor who does shut down one, but it's going to be instantly traded out onto the dock of Hyena. This is looking good for Ryze. The Smokes will start to go out. Ryze, of course, have that control over the console windows. Thomas still below, however, still threatening with that Nitro. Still be able to put stuff up on the board. This is looking... A bit squiffy for both sides, but Doodle does call that kill onto Adam. That's definitely going to move things more into the favor of Luminosity. And now they know the Diffuser is down in sight. Factor finding his second for the round against Acid. And as you said, the knowledge of the Diffuser plus the C4 the Valkyrie's got from underneath as she gets killed could have been the big swing in this, but very clever from Luminosity. Oh, very clever from Rice to shut down Luminosity. The swing there from Luminosity drops England, and with only five seconds left and a long distance to go between the second operator, doesn't matter, because the first you meet is going to kill you anyway. Luminosity, yet again, keep this back and forth game of badminton, well, very deadly. Is a bit deadlier than badminton, I suppose. I haven't played badminton in a while. Right. Um... Were there, were, were there guns involved previously? I don't remember so, but we'll see if guns oh. are going to be involved in this next round. As Factor is definitely put himself on the board, eleven and four already, definitely threatening uh, Neptune's record here so far. Consulate pronounce things are looking good so far for Luminosity. It will, oh well, kind of par for the course, I would say. I mean, being in the situation of four four, obviously we've already kind of mentioned NA's almost habitual system of getting to over time and getting to these kind of 2-1 maps in the best of threes. And this is, I guess, the perfect example of this, the fact that nobody has taken more than one round in a row. Uh, just repeatedly been finding ways through each other. And we've been repeatedly going through different points as well. They've never taken the same point twice so far. And, you know, it's, it's kind of, I guess, the play styles, as I said, they know each other very well. They've done their prep and we've already kind of talked about how big picking Villa was for Rise, and you kind of they're looking in better form on this map than I think people might have expected yeah uh, yeah no I, I definitely agree with that I think that Rise are definitely been playing a bit keep up and Adam's definitely been doing really really well for him so far and for his team of course Factor again bringing you the vigil. I definitely prefer a vigil pick here than upstairs. Yep. I think here the kind of like flanks and the rotates and holding onto the roam is a lot easier. I think the big danger on Consulate is not the early game roam, but the late game flanks. Yeah, it, it's the thing about it is, as we said before, the pace that you can kind of collapse upon on this map and the way the drop downs kind of sync up for a lot of teams and how it can also, you know, if you think about, okay, when you're pushing this point, when you're pushing Cafe, you usually assume people are going to try and get control of piano. And in the meantime, there's a drop down right above kind of piano from the uh, CEO office where you can find a way inside and you can find a way down below people. You can use the open ground that they've already made. You have the option to move across the floor as well. And if need be, you've got another two drop downs across a very short floor. So there's so many other places you can take your way down from the top floor. Add to that, there's also three sets of stairs. My gosh, Romans, you are spoiled for choice. Yeah, definitely. That's why it's so much easier to retake, of course, as England is going to make his way through into Adamant and see what he can do from this side. Lots of heavy drawing coming out from Rise across the board to make sure that top floor is, of course, clear of those pesky roamers up on the board. But also the big advantage of bringing Vigil here as well is that you can sit at any point and you can activate your Vigil charge, whatever it's called again, and they don't know what floor you're at. Yeah. It, it's one of the things where it's like when you see creative uses of the 
kind of bubble of utility usage. You see it most commonly with Jackal going through multiple floors. He'll shotgun through a floor and find footprints beneath him. And, you know, I say that, okay, in terms of utility, that's one of the most common you see. But then, as you said, Vigil and the space you can play those. Mute, and to be fair, actually, you always see mutes put up slightly higher so they'll be able to stop the floor. And this is a great point for that. If you dig mute jammers into a close corner, and obviously he's not being bought right now, this is more an example, but you can put them and completely shut down yellow stairs from the doorway without having a mute jammer anywhere really close. Oh yeah, definitely, definitely. We do see a bit of mute mozzie combo definitely coming out here. But we don't see any of that coming out right now from Luminosity as Hyena still, of course, threatening with that Nitro. But it's going to be Rexon who picks up the first kill of the round. And this is going to be huge rotate from Luminosity. They rotate all the way above. They've got three people on this flank. Call it at the Norangu as Adam shuts one down. A nade comes out and that shuts another one down. And Rise just completely eliminate the flank coming through. What a play from Luminosity, but it will get shut down. Very nicely by Luminous by uh, by Rise. Rexon, however, still up on this room and still with that flank potential. I'm. Did the grenade kill the man on the top floor, or did we see just a kill at the same time? I think it we must saw have a kill killed. At the same time. Yeah, because I was like, where has that come <laughs> from? Has that popped up in the kill feed? Acid finds Doodle. Puts it against Rexon versus the world. He's found his way back around to the point. He oh. gets the defuser planner. And with 10 seconds left, that is actually huge. If he can keep control here on the gridlocks. Oh. No, Ash swings in at the most important time yet again. Adam bringing some impact here for Rise to, well, yet again, only put one round apiece. That would have been an insane clutch from Rexon if he managed to put those frags up on the board. But round number 10 getting underway. And yeah, I feel like from Luminosity, that was a that was a make or break play for them for sure. Yeah, I mean it was a bold attempt, and for the first time this map we're going to see the same point twice in a row. They're going to head back to cafe, and I'm curious if we see anything like that again because you know we talked about the kind of rotation and the possibilities of that stuff and the collapse. Usually you don't see it as bold, loud, and aggressive as three people charging, though. You definitely don't. Definitely do not. It's going to be a cafeteria garage defense once again coming out now from Luminosity. And hopefully a bit of a change up in strategy coming out from them. They have brought the same lineup. However, I'm hoping they're kind of be more conscious about, yes, like the Nomad as well. I'm really surprised they would do a three man flank when there's a Nomad up on the board. Because as soon as the air jab goes off, Rise immediately know it's going to be a heavy flank. Yeah, I think that's the kind of. It's it's yeah you know, it's one of those bomb. things about it is when we've talked about Nomad and we've talked about her usage on this map, usually we then follow up with to cover outside peaks and then you'll see gridlock inside to offer some control. But you always remember that sometimes you know, or particularly if you are kind of keeping control of certain points, you put her internally in how tight these doorways can be, how close the corridors can be, and how together people can be with all the debris that you can hide them in. You know, it can become such big, big pieces of control. Yeah, no, it definitely can be. We'll see how things continue to go down. As we move into round number 10, things looking pretty good for Rise, I would say, right now. If you can find at least one more attack in the next couple of rounds, they can put themselves in a nice position. But as I said, Luminosity should have a good opening frags there. In fact, uh, as a double kill comes out from him, England and Adam both off the board. Adam's been a huge entry fragger here for Rise, and him going down early. That's going to be hurt, definitely. Yeah, I mean, that's obviously Adam has we've already said it's been a really big factor, but also their soft destruction and the consistent uh, soft destruction has been taken off too. England, who has otherwise found kills with the frag grenades as well, they've lost the hammer from above, they've lost their quick and easy way in through piano, and you know, Luminosity have looked well. They look like they're in a very good stead to be able to take this round. There's two minutes on the board. Rise have a lot of time to factor in a secondary plan and. I guess we'll see if they can make it work against Factor, who has otherwise already had a really good round so far, if on a little bit of health. Vandal, in the meantime, is creeping around the back stairs and trying to find his way in and amongst the back of the defense as slyly as possible, but might not know that there's someone in server. He's going to ignore the default cam and try and creep through, and it's just going to set a trap up as Acid, in the meantime, takes care of Thomas on the front door. The camera goes off. Whether they caught Vandal or not, I guess we'll find out in the ensuing firefight in just a moment, but he is in between a rock and a hard place, and both those things are armed. 
Yeah, Vandal's actually going to know there's someone in archives right now as his uh, jab will get shot out. And Acid desperately trying to make his way through onto yellow. This is not looking good for Ryan to actually go for their execute right now as Factor is still behind as well to try and do whatever he can do to try and outmaneuver Vandal on the Nomad. who's a mile away from this push right now. This is not good at all. Another air jab will get shot off the board. And another drone will take be taken out by Factor as well. This is looking really, really good for Luminosity to try and shut this whole thing down. As Acid tries to make his way down onto yellow. Factor doesn't have any of those impacts remaining, so he can't make any new rotates for himself. ADSs will start to get burned. And Rise desperately need to start their execute now if they wanted to do anything to work. We still got loads of utility on the board here from Luminosity as well. As smoke starts to go out. Yeah, you look at the kind of nitros, you look at the smokes, you look at the ability to stop this plan if it does creep into the default position, and that's the kind of nightmare. And in the same time, the nightmare continues as your back cover gets taken off, and well, so does one of the bodies on the front. All down to the thermite with the diffuser, but with 20 seconds left and Rexon just charging you, <laughs> what else can you really do? Luminosity. Rexon, he, five, uh, five five. He really went deep for that one, I guess. Hey, you got you got you got to go deep sometimes. You got to try and find the kills. Find the man behind the car. Luminosity in a really good position to start to take this back into their favor. They've got defense right now. Rise have won two attacks, but that may just be all the attacks that they do indeed win. As we move into round number 11, it is, of course, going to be that console office defense once more from Luminosity. And this was... This was weird. I feel like Rise had so much control here last time. Yeah, obviously it was, well, out of lobby and console, the one that they won. So you would assume they've got a little bit of faith here, and I guess it's up to see if, you know, Luminosity can kind of keep the same role that they had previously. And obviously, as you said, it was a lot of control, and it was kind of thrown to the wind, and Rise, I guess, seeing if they can find some semblance of Attack holding on to that. They've obviously bomb. opted to change to KB and bring her into the mix and take care of the hard destruction, which I think is a smart move. Yeah, there's a position where you can blow a wall open, but at this point, I think they're going to try something a little bit more with the smoke grenades. Unless they've bought the frag grenades, actually. They could have tried to double down on that in terms of, you know, what they do with the um, utility of the gridlock. Yeah. Because um, they, tr they tried a little bit of smoky stuff before, but it was very late. I think, you know, smokes are definitely the, the quintessential way of trying to push this out, and Acid hopefully has brought this along. Uh, double nature IG couldn't be a bad thing here at all for Ryze, and we saw that Doodle playing around the connector window was a big issue for uh, Adam when he was on the Ash on connector window, trying to deal with all of that from the smoke, because if he kills the smoke there early on, that is a big important frag from Ryze that may just win the round. There was also a big issue for Ryze to try and clear this downstairs area, which of course is a big threat when there's nitros on the board from Thomas. Well, trying to find their way inside at this point and get some idea of where the defenders are currently roaming around. In the meantime, well, Luminosity are happy to keep their point architecture up as they start to careen their way through the many walls and open up the many angles. Completely reinforced off the top of yellow stairs. I'm going to want to roll around with that at all. And it can be a solid strategy, but it also means that obviously the side retake can be tough as well because we've seen that win rounds. It's the ability to fire on through the wall and go for what is often the close and consistent default plant point without having immediate feet inside the room itself. At the same time, you know, it can often open you up to a bit of destruction. So maybe they're just trying to be a little bit more solid in what they're doing and doubling down on the fact that they've bought the castle. Ash is going to try and find the opening frags that Adam has been so consistent at doing so far on those windows. And, well, if he goes down, it could bring the whole ship with him again. Adam really has been the defining part of the roster of Rise right now. And you are correct. He's been doing a great job at just exactly like playing windows as well. Like he's been really, really good at that so far. We're going to see him trying to open up a bit of vertical play for himself here. He tried to put a little knock in that window as he will ash out from below. Desperate to find someone and see what he can do here. He's going to try and move them out of this position as nades are going to go out deep as well. But Doodle still being a pain in that position as well right now as drones are going to go out as well to try and confirm exactly where he was. Adam should be able to find that frag from below, honestly. Well, in the meantime, Beastly has used both frag grenades and hasn't really found anything out of them, unfortunately. Still, obviously, freeze England to creep up the back stairs. And Doodle, Ooh. in the meantime, drops acid. What? 
big take on the window, and that is those smokes we talked about off. Vandal at least gets Rexon, and Thomas finds England to keep it battling back between the two teams as Ash is still working on the body, but in the meantime, it's the patience of Beastly that pays off. The frag grenades don't work, but a gun sure does, and with 40 seconds on the board and a 3-2, Rise have got to try and double down and find their way through Luminosity. Vandal crept into lobby and Beastly's under the window. So Castle, in fact, hasn't taken the fight, has just opted to rotate out, going to head back to the top floor, and they're going to hold this more as a flat point and say, we'll come push on us, because they know at this point, Rise have to aggressively push towards a point. And with Beastly this far away with the Diffuser, they only have an option but to try and rush it. And if they get caught on the swing and the Diffuser goes cold over, well, that's the end of the round. They still haven't found their way any close towards pushing against this point. And with five seconds, they can't even make it if they full sprint. You wonder how that went down there in the comms. What a play from Doodle. Just, he did so well there as well. He uh, he killed Acid as well, who wasn't playing on the windows, he was playing on the skylight. So Doodle pushed out a little bit, looked up behind him as well, and through that kind of opening hole as well into the skylight, he managed to pick that frag. That frag and his ability to just play there for so long you could see how much rise were dedicating to try and push him out of that corner and no matter what they did they could not get doodle out of there and i think a lot of that round was really on doodle honestly so really good job by him that's going to push us to match point for luminosity and we're going to head to a lobby press room defense once more well that's the first time we've seen two rounds go in one way and obviously it's right at the finishing line. So can they make it three, do the unthinkable throughout this game and find themselves taking this lobby, which to be fair has gone once to the defenders and twice to the attackers across this entire game. But who knows what they might be able to change about how it went down last time. Obviously, the first time they bought it, it was a little bit of a bait and switch attempt. They swapped out and they bought a, you know, they, if you look at how their lineup was previously, they had a mirror on the board. They had the Jaeger, which was swapped from the other side. And this is hopefully more of what they intend for this whole game. I mean, this is kind of what they were doing last time, right? And they're going to, I'm going to assume they're going to do the soft mirror again as well. I think this is an effective strategy, honestly, because it, it, ends up being Ryze who have to kind of utility dump to try and move this along. I like the inclusion of the Adam Twitch here though, knowing that how much of a pain these uh, mirror windows were. Well, there's no mirror on the board. Mirror's taking a holiday. They're, they're playing with Ella this time, so I guess it can still be part of taking control of potentially the uh, Jaegers inside and those kind of side of things. But as I was saying, you know, with the Legion on the board as well to try and stem the role of pushing yeah. up close, I think that's a really big operator for this point. Legion is an operator that you can say is big on like any point because of how useful and versatile it is. But you've got to look at the multiple ways of immediately getting in on this place and how just having that little bit of a stem of a role where Say someone enters on those big lobby doors, they're trying to be a bit quick and aggressive about it. They take a Legion mine. If they try and take it out, they're dead. If they try and fall back, they're often dead as well. Like, it's such a tight place to suffer a trap if you haven't got bodies and cover that you need. It definitely has been. Definitely like the new setup coming out from Luminosity here. Very, very top heavy coming out from them. As well as Doodle making a lot of these shotgun holes a lot earlier than he did them last time as well. But don't forget, Adam picked up a number of kills through this vertical plane. He was able to do a lot of damage to Luminosity's lineup. But as we say that, Factor is the one who finds the first kill of the round onto Beastly. Nice run out coming out from him. That's already the Decay Beat off the board. But oh, the wide peak coming out from the dock of Hyena once again going down from such a long angle. Thomas should be able to refract this though. Well, he's instead going to rotate out. <laughs> whether he meant to, whether he fell, I guess be down to him, but we'll see if he can make a secret agent move as he rotates round underneath. Obviously with the frag grenades taken out from Takebi, that's quite a nice removal, but Adam is just going to swing in. The drones are feeding his information. He looks for the body, but can't quite find it, but has found his way right into the heart of this hold. If they can find the diffuser over this cover as well, they are completely alone in this point. Yes, there's two bodies above. They're being watched from the drop down, but in the meantime, no one's on the lobby side. And it's just a huge amount of central grab to be given over. And yeah, Nate's not going to go out as well, but it's going to be Doodle picks up Acid. That is Diffuser down and off the board. And Factor's managed to find his way back into sight, but Adam will farm him out. And there goes Factor. It's going to be a 3v2 now, but Luminosity have a lot of that vertical control, and they know where this Diffuser is indeed. Down Rexon almost gets caught out, but it's going to be England's nice nade from below. That does find Doodle. 
This is all now for Rexon to try and do. He finds one onto Vandal. That's that front door control going back into the defender's favor. As from above, Rexon should be able to find another one. There we go. Diffuser is down. Another Legion Mine is going to go down as well to give him a little bit of favor here. And it is going to detonate. Adam taking so much damage from that. He's going to be forced to pull it out. 30 seconds left to go on the clock. Adam is alone. And both both of them are such low HP right now. Adam's going to try and move his drone up. But Rexon's going to take it down. And Adam's gonna have a good idea about where this is coming through, but Rexon! Oh, he runs into an Elysian mine! And there we go, Adam will go down. That is unfortunate, as Luminosity will put their first map on the board. What did I say about Legion on that point? What did I say about Legion being Definitely good and important play. on that point? My god, what a play, what a clutch, what a moment for Luminosity from a game that was back and forth. They took three in a row, however, it's a best of three. So we'll see you for Villa after this break. Predict the outcome, win the game. Get live coverage and schedules for your favorite tournaments. Analyze, predict, and vote to gain points. Compete with other esports fans and climb the leaderboards. Straight, everything esports. Download now on iOS and Android.